Hey guys, so I was at a Bigger Pockets meetup here a couple weekends back uh, with my friend Austin. Uh, he was actually on the Bigger Pockets podcast as well. And uh, we got to talking a lot about return on equity as a way of kind of looking at your investments in real estate. So I wanted to take a quick minute and kind of explain what return on equity means and why that's a useful way of looking at your uh, at your real estate investments. So. I'm gonna do a little comparison of when you first buy a house versus what happens after you've held onto one for a while. And uh, you know why the cash out or why the trade up system kind of works so well as far as keeping your investments working as hard as possible. So I'm gonna use an example. These are kind of typical numbers for a house that uh, I would buy here in Kansas City. So we're gonna buy a $70,000 house on a typical investment loan. You're gonna put down 20%, so that is $14,000. And typical numbers that I see are, is about $200 a month net cash flow, and that's after all of your expenses, property manager, vacancy, maintenance, capex, all that kind of stuff. You should be netting around $200 a month. That's kind of what I shoot for. So if you take that $200 a month, you multiply it by 12, you're gonna get an annual uh, cash flow of 2,400 bucks. And your investment, so your actual money invested is $14,000. So $2,400 divided by $14,000, you've got a 17% cash on cash return, which that's, you know, that's smoking any rate you're going to get in the, in the stock market. So that's really good. Plus you're getting that appreciation and the loan pay down that real estate is so good for. Um, so that's kind of the, the purchase side. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you hold on to that property for a while. So I'm going to take that same property, I'm going to assume, make a couple of assumptions. So I'm going to assume you're seeing 3% appreciation both on the price as well as the rents. You know, that's basically just keeping up with inflation, so that's pretty typical. And you've held on to it for 10 years. So based on those assumptions as well as being on a 20-year note, which uh, that's most of my investment properties are on 20-year amortization. When you first purchased this property, assuming you didn't buy at a discount, you paid full market price, your equity was basically $14,000, which is your down payment. Now that you've held on to it for 10 years, your equity is it's almost $60,000 here, and that's a combination of getting the loan pay down as well as getting that 3% per year appreciation. So you've got a big chunk of money sitting in that house that's really just kind of dead money. So assuming you got 3% appreciation on the rent as well, your new annual cash flow from that house is 3216 and then uh, that is divided by the equity that you now have in that property so basically you have fifty nine thousand dollars into that property essentially as equity so now your effective cash on cash return is only 5.4 percent so this is basically dead money right because you don't you're not using leverage to the greatest extent possible and that's what makes real estate so powerful. So what I always say is every five to 10 years to keep your money working as hard as you possibly can, you wanna be figuring out a way to strip out that equity and put it to use. So if you have equity in your house, you can pull that equity out at 3% and go invest it and make you know, 15, 20, even 30%, you're obviously gonna be a lot better off. So what I would do with this house is you got one of two options. So option A, as I can sell that house, I'll cash out, I'll take that $60,000 that I get and go buy you know, two or three more houses with it. Uh, the second option is I can do a cash out refinance and basically pull, pull that equity back out of the house and back to 80% uh, loan value and then use that money to go buy more. So uh, <clears throat> we were actually at this meetup and uh, you know, Austin and I were talking strategy with a couple guys who were trying to figure out how to get going here. And this is no kidding. There was a guy there who owned his primary residence free and clear. This was like a $180,000 house. And he also had a rental property that I think he said his loan balance was something like $30,000. And, uh, you know, I think it was worth a hundred and something thousand dollars. So basically this guy was sitting on $200,000 worth of equity between these two properties. And, you know, he was kind of trying to figure out what his, what his best move was, right? So Austin and I kind of coached him through that a little bit. So basically, if you were to take $200,000, assuming you know this is your typical property, $14,000 down payment, uh, you basically just went out and bought, uh, what's that, 10 houses, right? <laughs> so in a matter of the next year, if he was to you know, take that money, pull it out, and then go buy 10 houses over the course of the next year, 
in another five years, he should be able to uh, build, up, uh, build up enough equity in those 10 houses to where he can actually go and double that and buy 20. So basically in a matter of you know, 10 to 15 years doing absolutely nothing creative just with the amount of equity that he had in his house in that rental, you know, he could have 30 plus units. And uh, as you guys know, that's enough to retire off of pretty easily. So, um, you know, that guy was in a really good position, but you know, the way he'd been investing to date, he wasn't really using or making the best use out of his equity. And, uh, you know, it was kind of holding him back there a little bit. So too much equity is dead money. So if you have equity sitting in your house, you should pull that out and go invest it somewhere else to where you can keep it, you know, working as hard as possible, um, at least until you get to the number of units that you want. So if your goal is to ultimately have X dollars of cash flow per month, then you know you need, let's say you need 40 units to get to whatever your goal is. Once you get to that 40 number, then it might make sense to go ahead and start, you know, paying the loan down on some of them. But until you reach that number, I would uh, use leverage as much as possible, obviously within reason. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of margin on your cash flow so that you're in a safe position. So that is my video for today. So thanks, guys. Bye.